Hi, I'm Kevin. And I'm Ty. We're at Kamala Brewing at the Whip Inn. And you're watching The, the Beer, Beer Diaries. Rolling fast down I 35. Through the day and past the Hey folks, I'm Greg from The Beer Diaries. I am here at the Kamala Brewery at the Whip Inn with Kevin and Ty, the head brewer and brewer, and we are going to talk about beer, of all things. <laughs> thanks for being on the show, guys. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. And thanks for having us. We're on the stage, and there's a whole bunch of people eating behind us and drinking beer, wondering what the heck's going on. Normal for The Whip Inn, though, right? Always normal. Oh, ever-changing. <laughs> ever-changing? So, for folks that aren't from Austin, I mean, you know, the Whippin is, is an institution. Uh, it's been all kinds of stuff over the years. I mean, do you guys want to talk about its origins? Was, originally, it was a convenience store, wasn't it? Is that right? Yeah, yes. Yeah, that's right. Uh, dating back to the mid 80s, um, Pops, as we call them, yeah. um, started the Whippin as a you know, conventional convenience store slash gas station. What was the next the next iteration? There's beer you could make your own or something, or six packs or something like that? Yeah, well, they started. Uh, selling craft beer and they yeah. noticed that they were making money in the 80s too this beer. is a long yeah, time yeah this ago, was right? like they started in 86 so i think craft beer oh. back then might have been like just european import yeah yeah and that was not one of the conventional top threes yeah. so that was weird yeah weird weird austin weird <laughs> which is a good weird yeah that's austin yeah. weird and i mean I, I in my time in austin it's really funny i mean we were talking earlier we said like up front so the kitchen is moved the kitchen was some hot plates at the front which I had some Indian food from, which was really good. Mm -hmm. so, so there's a whole Indian theme you're probably catching if you see this wonderful bearded gentleman. I'm not pointing at Kevin, I'm talking at the poster. <laughs> but uh, there's a real cool theme here. It's like sort of Indian convenience store, craft beer. So the kitchen moved around. The, if for anyone that's, you know, if you ever kind of went here like on a, say, yearly basis, every time you entered, the layout was completely different. Or, or possibly weekly. Weekly basis. Weekly? Yeah. Weekly? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the. Once he once Pops realized that he could make money doing imports, yeah, he was like, okay, let's expand that. Let's get a kitchen in here doing yeah. con, um, traditional Indian food from his wife, who we call moms. It's kind of it's, it's sort of traditional, but also kind of eclectic, isn't it? Well, it's got this like kind of Southwest Texan flair to it. Yeah, it's really neat, actually. Pretty cool. So instead of just doing like um, nachos, they're Indianized nachos. So yeah. They have this like kind of Indian flair. You put a little chutney in there, and yeah. all of a sudden it yeah. makes it you know makes it unique. Makes it that Austin kind of weirdness. Right. So. And then then I think as the evolution continued, I remember it went from being there were a couple beers on tap to na suddenly there were sixty. Is it sixty now? Seventy-two. I think Seventy. Yeah. Seventy-two or seventy-four. Yeah. Seventy-four. Seventies. Seventies and wine <laughs> bar like pretty like it's funny because you have the you have a classic craft beer bar back there, and then you got this like wine like. Pretty hoity-toity. You drink like your wine, like this, like wine bar, just right next to yeah, it. Yeah, pinkies are out. Pinkies, quite are, often, pinkies yeah. are out. And then a nice patio outside with live music. We're on the stage, so there's actually a lot of cool live music here as well. A lot of great music. Definitely, we have a South by Southwest coming up soon. And oh yeah. That's, we do a huge kind of free party inside and outside. Lots of beer sponsors. And, and then finally, the pinnacle from our perspective on the Beer Diaries, the pinnacle of brewery. So the brewery, you guys have been running the brewery, it's been going for how long now? Uh, about two years now. About two years. So it's, it doesn't seem like that long at all. But... <laughs> and uh, things have gone well. I mean, we'll get yeah. more a little later, but you uh, got a, a medal at GABF, not only a medal, a golden medal in a very competitive category. So we'll talk about that uh, in a few minutes. Um, so the brewery itself, I mean, you two guys are, are are making beer. What what sort of scale are we at here? Nano. Yeah. Yeah. Nano? We, we have a we're using a Sabco right now. It's yeah. a half barrel kegel system. Um, yeah, and we're just brewing like all the time. Like, yeah. You know, eight times a week, ten so, times a week. Because you have a lot of beers. I mean, like it's it's interesting. So we're we're obviously we have to be drinking the gold medalist on film. So we're on 
This, this is the, what's it called? It's called? It's called the Bitterama. Bitterama. It is a uh, ESB. Um, we use wild rice in the mash, and we steep some uh, Earl Grey tea yeah. uh, right at the end before we chill it. It's delicious. Thank you. And so, but you do a ton of beers, and they're also they're all pretty creative. That's actually one of the other things that's kind of interesting about the beers. Like, I don't think I, off the top of my head, I can't think of any that's just like a straight up, just regular. Are there any that's just straight up regular style? Because everything's got an infusion of something or a tincture or a, a like some kind of addition. Is that accurate? Yeah, I think that's pretty accurate. I, I, there's got to be something. That I think we've done like, done some things for like special events. Like we do a, an extra pale ale called the Dank Ale, and like. The, yeah, I think the thing that makes it weird is that it's just a, a hoppier version of an extra pale what do you, ale. What do you hop it with to get it dank? We use a Chinook and Simcoe. Okay. Lots yeah. of late additions. Yeah. That one. Danks it up nicely. Good armpittiness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, for those people who like their ales with armpit <laughs> yeah, and dankness. Know. Yeah, very dank. It's so for a bike social, so that's oh, kind of the... Nice. Well, that makes sense. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what, so, what, so from, from, from brewing philosophy, how did you get to this sort of super creative, interesting beer perspective what what made you think that was the way to go well i think a lot of it started with deepak he would have like an idea for a beer like i guess esb with earl gray tea yeah and we're like okay we'll we'll give that a try it's like earl gray tea is english mm -hmm. ESB, esb is, is english, english. you know i mean it's a pretty classic esb with the addition of you know the tea yeah um, we use english hops english yeast english malt um so you'd be like yeah so in other words you're following the the traditional kind of idea for like a herb or spice beer, you base beer is the base beer, right. and you add something to it to kind of. And a lot of that is like just Deepak's palate. He's like, you know, well, we should try this kind of beer with this ingredient. Yeah. And we're like, okay, maybe, you know, that'll work. Sometimes I'm, I was a little skeptical, like especially like the Bitterama, which has like lemongrass and grapefruit peel. Like I never. Brahmel. Brahmel. Yeah. The Brahmel with yeah. lemongrass and grapefruit peel. Um, it just sounded weird. Yeah, but it's, it's, when it was, we made it, you know, it, yeah. it actually tasted nice. Yeah, We're, no, I've had that. That's a great one as well. And then I think as we, you know, kept brewing, you know, Ty and I just kind of took some more initiative and just started coming up with our own creations. Is there is there any um, any particular uh, ingredient that you said, okay, no way, we're not using? I mean, I think a lot of times <laughs> when you're brewing and you're just like, you know, part of being a brewer is running through ideas of what'll work. And I mean, yeah. we think of crazy, yeah, we, crazy crap all the time. Are you guys kind of like palate driven? So like you're, you're, you're tasting what you're making and you're really thinking about, like you're going for a target taste? You know, I, I like to make beers personally that I, I would want to drink. Yeah. And that's kind of the direction that we're starting to go. Like we'd mentioned like more wild ales and sours. Yeah, yeah. The Saison we do, which that actually one's close to being a more traditional, we don't close really to add any flair, but I had heard of this, like a French hop called Strisselspall. You know, that Saison kind of borders the thing of French, French Belgian, yeah, Franco yeah. Belgian. And so it was like, well, why don't we, you know, mix, you gotta do something to make it unique. So oh, take, take a hop that's not as used as often for a Saison, do that. Right, right. So that's more the thinking is how can we be somewhat unique? I mean, you're not gonna reinvent the wheel. Everyone does an IPA recipe and there's only so many deviations you can do. Yeah, you can, you can, like, if you're yeah. doing, Purely to style, you actually, in many ways, limit yourself, I think, in, in some, yes. some sense. Right, right. So, uh, moving to a few personal questions. Um, Kevin, your mm -hmm. brewing background, Where how'd you get into brewing? Wow. I think I brewed my first batch of beer when I was in my early 20s. Like, a buddy of mine brewed beer. Was, yeah. This was, like, mid-90s. Um, probably about four or five years ago, I just broke down and bought a kit from Austin yeah. Home Brewer. Okay. Started brewing. Um, was laid off of my previous job shortly thereafter. And I was lucky enough that Deepak, you know, I saw that they were starting a brewery here. Yeah. I was hanging out, bringing him my home brews. Yeah, um, some samples of what you were doing. Him, you know, hey, when do you start this brewery? If you need yeah. somebody to work, you know, let me know. I'm looking for a job. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was fortunate enough that, you know, he did eventually hire me. Yeah, and that's cool. And so, um, Ty, uh, your background, how'd you get into brewing? Were you brewing before, or is this sort of new for you? I was, I've been brewing since, uh, Graduate school, so like 2006, okay. um, and someone like who was home in the, brewing and stuff. Or? Yeah, someone who was in the grad program was like, "Hey, I got an extra kit. You want to try?" And you know, tried. And that's, to be honest, most of the batches I did then really sucked, and like yeah. I needed like forcefully give them to a friend and be like, "Oh, it's great, man! <laughs> like, yeah, go for yeah, it. Yeah, make some more, please. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thanks and then so much." Flash forward to being um, back in Texas, um, ended up kind of delivering goat meat to the whip in, and. Deepak knew I was into like brewing and yeah. stuff, and he's like, well, hey, do you want to come bartend? And I was like, yeah, I need the extra money, that sounds cool. Was bartended for a year, and then 
once they got the brewery license, um, he was like, he'd had my homebrews, and by then they actually tasted good. And so, so you were homebrewing again at that uh, time? Yeah, I'd, I'd been homebrewing since graduate school, and I kind of just kept oh, getting my it. recipes down and um, won a few like small competitions in town, and yeah. Deepak really liked the beer, and he's like, hey, if you want to switch from bartending to assistant brewer, so working at nights to working during the day. Yeah, yeah. And I was all about it. Yeah. Well, it's a little more to, to your story too. I mean, I mean, one of the things I think about you know, that's interesting. I mean, the family farm uh, mm -hmm. is a well-known producer and provider of goat meat, and it's, it's. Can you talk a little bit about that? That's uh, sure. Yeah. Um, so Windy Hill Farm um, was started by me about five years ago, and I took my parents' existing ranch and turned it into a retail business. Yeah. Um, and it's a family ranch, like, um, like you said. My mom and stepdad do most of the day-to-day -day work. Um, I mostly do marketing and sales now and then go up there to help when they need extra labor. Um, and then we also buy from other producers um, that are kind of partners, Sudai Co-op, not a legal co-op. but um, And yeah, we basically our idea is to get Texas eating Texas goat. Yeah, and yeah. that's kind of been my ethos is that we have a sustainable meat in the state and people should be eating it because it's delicious as long yeah. as they eat meat. They yeah. be eating it, so. <laughs> if you happen to eat meat, yeah, right. it's delicious. <laughs> yeah. If not, yeah. then well, you know, yeah. coop. And so that's and that's actually I think around town here. It's you're the common you guys are the provider of most of the goat meat in town here. Yeah, right? we've been lucky enough to get into the industry and um, at a time when there aren't other people that thought goat was a good meat for a city. And I, so yeah, we're very lucky to have lots of great chefs and a good food community. Yeah, yeah. Um, including the Whippin is, is one of yeah. my you know biggest biggest buyers. They do a goat slider that's out of this world <laughs> and pairs really good with the beer we make. So oh, nice. it's pretty cool. Which, which beer did, which beer does it pair with? Um, I personally like it either with um, the, the brown ale because it has a little spice. Um, it's got like a jalapeno on it so that, you know, the kind of grapefruit and hoppiness kind of cuts back up some of the spice and the goat has enough gaminess to kind of go with the malt back on the... On okay, the, cool. Um, so. And so what, one other thing about um, you is, that, was, did you recently get on some sort of special list of under 30 year olds, under top under 30 or something like that? I, what's, I did. what's the name of that thing? So what was um, it? Zagat, which I... Okay. Didn't know that's how you pronounced it until I got Cigar. nominated for this, but okay. um, they do a 30 under 30 yeah. in the city, and um, I was really lucky enough, I mean, humbly lucky enough. I, and they're kind of like, they tend to be a foodish guide, is that? Exactly, yeah. So, yeah, yeah and, um, so it's culinary. Yep, yeah, they contacted me mostly for the, the goat side of it, and then found out I was also assistant brewer here, and they're like, oh man, yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, and yeah, and I just made it. I, I turned 30 today, so I made it by a week and one day. Nice. So just that was my. So your days. this is your last chat. It's, you know, actually speaking from experience, it's all downhill from here. Right. Like, actually, yeah. right after, here. After this, I mean, there's Sorry. some top 40 under 40 competitions. If you, you got only t you got 10 years, you yeah. got to work hard to get into those, and then they forget about you. There's nothing top 50 under 50. They don't care. Right. That's it. After yeah. 40, you're, you're done for. Yeah. <laughs> very very cool. So um, one of the other really huge things, and I think we're we're drinking it uh, that happened fairly recently for you guys was uh, GABF. We touched on a little earlier in the interview I'd like to go into detail on that you guys got a very very important award yeah we uh, we got a gold medal in the urban spice category it was the third most competitive category in the whole competition right and honestly I was floored I was like <laughs> really <laughs> and you, we were, you, were, you, were, you were you were at the and you were at the ceremony we went to the awards ceremony I kind of missed them uh, reading the name out because we were cheering for black star they black star oh. won bronze oh, nice. in the same yeah, category black star here in Austin. yeah black yeah. star co-op so we we're like Woo black yeah, star awesome. and then it's like bitterama <laughs> gold medal and we're like just kind of looking at each other was that, like, was that our bitterama so you know we went and got in line i think it took like an hour or two afterwards for it to really sink in i was i was really like I mean, you went we, up on the stage we went to the stage they gave us the medal you know they took a bunch of pictures yeah yeah and you know you can look the pictures are on the brewers association website i'm yeah. like standing there with like my mouth hanging over <laughs> um, kind of like stunned yeah i, I was pretty stunned yeah. but I, we, we were i was unfortunately couldn't go but i was planting garlic at the farm and I, they, sent, they sent me a text with like a picture of us at first, and I, 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 I was like, "You're screwing with me." We, we <laughs> they, had they, a. They, they've somehow. Yeah, yeah, like, they, they rigged it. Rigged it. Yeah. Just to trick we, we sent them a picture of the, our badge that said "Namaste Brewing" at the whip in yeah. our name at the time, yeah. and a gold medal, yeah. and just no text. I mean, I, there may have been like we just won or something yeah, like that. I, I didn't believe it. And, and you're uh, like, yeah, like where, where'd they get that medal from? You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I didn't believe it. It's awesome. And then, and then the rest of the day. I mean, when that happens as well, my understanding is it's it's a pretty raucous day for you. Like obviously, it's it's validation of all the hard work you put in. It's it's sort of a confirmation that you guys are doing good work. 
Um, but all your colleagues are like super happy for you too, right? Like, I yeah, mean, like totally. camaraderie and everything. I mean, it was great. About, and Texas did great. I think we had like 10 medals. Yeah, I think um, there was a bunch of. I mean, so it was, it was very King, exciting for everybody. Guys, Jester yeah. King, Relay yeah. um, quite quite a few. Awesome beer works. Awesome beer oh, works yeah. for sure. Yeah. So, so uh, you personally, like, I think you, you mentioned earlier that when we were chatting, like, you had a pretty big day. Like, a, yeah, yeah, like, you know, I'd been trying to take it easy, like, that whole week. I was at GABF, you know, just lots kinda, of beers, lots of temptation. To myself, you know, I knew yeah. I was going to be there for a few days. When won that medal, I just, you know, kind of started drinking, um, you know, Was it you drinking just bit pure Bitterama? You were just going, I'm drinking, drinking just Bitterama. Bitterama. You know, we're hanging out at the booth, just talking yeah. to people. And, did, uh, people did a lot of people come, I mean, what was it like at the booth? What happened with the, to the flow of people? And, and so, I mean, it, you know, we had a pretty steady trickle, like, the whole, you know, festival. But, yeah. like, after they announced, you know, we had, like, a line. Yeah. Um, and it was great. People just... We're really excited to come and try our beer. It was awesome yeah. just to be able to, to talk to people about our beer. What is it about this beer that you think worked for the judges? I mean, I think it was probably like unique. You know, it was something new and different. I mean, I think it was real, just fresh and real great you know, ESB, like well balanced, like the maltiness and then yeah. the like citrusiness and there's like a little bit of tea and, yeah. and the nuttiness from from the rice. I think it just works like really well together. Yeah, that's. A... Personally, I, I used to tell people that I, I don't like spice beers. Which is kind of funny. Oh boy, do we, if, we, if we had that on film, eh? Well, because like <laughs> and, well, it's, it's kind of like everything we make is like a spice beer yeah, to some yeah. extent. And I think what it really comes down to is like balance. Yeah. You know, like a lot of the spice beers, and you know, we talked about smoked beers earlier yeah. too. Like it's just overdone. It's like yeah, if you, it's if not you, very palatable. Well, I think really. actually the and the judging guidelines on those categories are it first has to be a balanced base beer mm. on which that addition sits and kind of adds rather than just kind right. of overpowers or you know and, takes takes the Stage. And that's something about like this beer, I could drink you know a few pints of you know. Yeah, it's unlike very, it's some very, spice beers where it's like after one or even yeah, like half yeah. one, you're like, yeah, I don't know if I can finish that. Like a jalapeno beer would be an example of right, uh, of kind like of the of go of yeah vegetable or spice and whatever and is in there. But yeah, it's a super drinkable. When I think as a, a standalone ESB or you know, I think it would, you know, I think it would do good in that style too without the spice personally because I think it is a really good um, base beer. Yeah, yeah. And then add, you know, I mean, who's done an Earl Grey? Beer, probably no one. Well, yeah, beer, so. like it's a tea. Tea is an interesting addition. I mean, I've I've heard of, and especially in lighter colored beers. I mean, you'll often, yeah. often. I mean, obviously coffee and stouts and that sort of thing is pretty common, but teas and in, in a, it's a it's a pretty unique, uh, unique example. When the bitter arm was announced, it's under the name Nemeste Brewing, which of course you've had to change since, or has been changed since. Uh, whether you had to or not, that's probably up to debate. But what was the situation with that? What what kind of led to the name change? If you well, guys are um, so um, dogfish head brews a beer called Namaste, it's a seasonal whip beer, um, and the way trademark laws work is Dogfish Head has a trademark on Namaste, and you have to protect those trademarks, yeah, yeah. Um, and so you know, Sam came to us personally, didn't do a cease and desist, and said, hey guys, you know, I have to protect my trademark, we're going we're gonna to need you to change it. Um, the brewery name, which changed the brewery name, and and he, you know, gave us said, you know, take as much time as you need um, and make that happen. And you know, there are some people were upset about that, but you know, if we change trademark laws, then you know, maybe it would be different. But that's probably not going to happen. That's kind of how trademarks so, work in a way. In a way, yeah. it's it's yeah. it's a shame, but I mean, that's guess. Hopefully, we'll get another medal with the new name. Um, so as far as the awesome beer scene itself, what's uh, is it, has it changed for you guys after after you got the medal? You what's know, what's I, it I been think, like? You know, you know, ever since we started, like people have been very friendly and helpful uh, towards us. I mean, there's probably been I I know, a, a bit of a piece of le legitimacy. Yeah, you know, yeah, like it definitely it was, added. Like, oh, it's you, at first it might have. Oh, it's just those guys on that Sabco. Those crazy guys on Sabco, and then yeah, I mean, yeah. still everyone is super friendly. And if yeah. you mm -hmm. go and ask someone, like, hey. Yeah. What, what happened to this beer? Or, hey, can we get maybe some yeast from you? No one's going to be like, oh, no, you're too small. Like, no one ever does that. But it adds a, like, okay, so. And the community generally has been really good and supportive. And yeah, they've been supportive, like, you know, since we started. But, it's, and the yeah. scene's still growing. I mean, we're, we're, doing, we're doing this interview now in, uh, you know, sort of 2014, and it seems to be cranking away still. More breweries on the yeah, there's horizon. more breweries popping up. I believe there's, uh, like, nine in planning right now in wow. Texas. Uh, right now. They've, yeah, yeah that the Texas Brewers Guild knows about. So many of these breweries that had numbers that they thought they were going to hit in 10 years are hitting them after one or two years. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, yeah. having to, like, double or even go. I mean, Carbach is a good example in, in Houston. I mean, they're 
they're getting ready to build this like multi-million dollar facility that they thought was 10, 20 years oh, down. Oh, really? They, they're already having to... And they're having to do it because, I mean, they're just... They've just been selling mostly in the Houston market until yeah. about a month ago. So yeah. that's, yeah. you know, one piece of a big, big state with a lot of big cities. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I, and I, I feel like, hope, I think the direction will be going from, I think a lot of people do like kind of base styles that know they know will do good in a wide populace. To, I think people are starting to experiment with other stuff because people's palates are also changing. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. A sour, funky beer is not something that's like, oh. People, people say horizons are absolutely expanding, like without yeah. a doubt. Sure. Yeah, and we have a way, a way, a big distance to go in a percentage of people that don't drink craft beer that are probably going to be interested yeah. in it. Well, a lot so. of the growth, I mean, there's there's ample space for growth in the, in the more mainstream market. It's, I'm not sure if you're seeing it in the U.S., but up in Canada, the the main the mainstream brewers or the sort of the big big brewers are really starting to put a lot of effort into kind of craft type beers, mm -hmm. and all it's really doing is getting people interested in the segment. It's great. So they'll go, hey, yeah. here's our special single hot beer. They'll go, oh, I taste a weird wee hint of hop, and someone will say, hey, or try this one. It actually tastes like hops. Right. They'll go, hey, that's really good. So. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because I think you're seeing that transition, um, and it's having a really positive impact. Yeah, I mean, Coors has a whole like craft beer segment now. You yeah, know, they have a whole like whole side thing just just for doing like craft beer. Yeah, and that just opens the door for people. Yeah, I think. yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Actually, I forgot to ask you. One question I was did I have a lot of people come here looking for the Bitterama? Definitely. What if it's not on? Do they go? Do they rage? Is there raging that goes on? Is there like pounding on the bar yeah. and like tears? Like what? That's why we keep tasers around. Oh, nice. Yeah. What's what? What do you say is the most unusual beer you guys have done so far? That spinach. Spinach? <laughs> yeah, we did, we did a spinach alfalfa saison for St. Patrick's Day last year. Oh, that's interesting. Um, which was uh, it was green. Yeah. It, it was very green. It was like a murky <laughs> kind of. We did a um, marshmallow sweet potato stout, mm -hmm. which I don't know if anyone's used marshmallows marshmallow. before. That's interesting. Essentially, it's just it's a sugar and vanilla. Yeah. And you, when you put it into the, the war, it just dissolves. What did you do with this? Did you? We just mashed it and then dry hopped with it. Okay. And the sweet potatoes themselves just again a sugar source. It's just, yeah, starch. Yeah. Starch. Yeah. So we've been talking for a little while. I think we've tried the uh, Bitterama a lot. Had lots of fine samplings. I'd like to see some of your other beers. I'm going to make a little table of beer up here if you guys are ready. All set? Certainly. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's do, do it. There we go. Ask and ye shall receive beer. How about that, eh? Amazing. We, we, don't, we don't spare any expense here on the Beer Diaries. We'll use magic to bring in beer. Um, before I tuck into these, though, I want to talk a little about the uh, Bitterama. And I, I did have it the day you guys won. I was at GABF. We, uh, I, I think we're driving. I think uh, Arjit or someone was saying, hey, they won. And he started going wild in the vehicle. We were driving to the show. And so we, someone in the car flipped out because you guys had, had, had won the award. I mean, like, like I, I can totally see why it won in the sense that the ESB is you can sort of still behind it. See this good ESB, but up front, like that Earl Grey citrus orangey tea is just, it's so balanced. I mean, it's just an amazing beer. So, so with, with the Bitterama, how often do you have it on? Uh, probably like half the time, honestly. We, we try to keep it on all the time. Obviously, we'd love to have it on all the time, but with the small system that we're using, it's just impossible. So the next one uh, is the uh, Sita's Revenge, a Saison. That's right. And um, I think you mentioned earlier, this is a little bit of a different hop profile. Like, can you tell me a little bit about, a lot of Saisons these days, it's funny, it went from being a style that no one was making three years ago that like really <laughs> common so what, what do you guys do different with your saison well um so the the base the base of it is pretty similar to traditional i mean it's only um pilsner malt wheat and then some crystal yeah. and, and that's it it's pretty simple um we, we're using a french pilsner so in lieu of that we we're using strissel spalt which is a low alpha hop from france um it's got this great kind of um lemony um, yeah, it should have a real lemony, and it has a real lemony flavor. Like right, that, that yeah, lemon. lemon and, um, we don't do any like any other sort of spice, but somehow so this is those, your only non-spice beer. It is our only non-spice beer. Yeah, wow. oh, yeah, more or less. More yeah. or less, yeah, more yeah. or less. That's on. No spinach. No spinach. No. no. Not this awesome. No. Um, yeah, so pretty straightforward, but um, we're really proud of it, and we're kind of messing around with adding some different ingredients to make it even more unique. Um, yeah. A little rye and maybe some Britannomyces. Oh, cool. Um, Give it a funky edge. To kind of make it a funky, because, you know, that traditional idea of the Saison was it was at a farmhouse where it's, there probably is that Brett character. It's open fermented. Open typically. fermented. Yeah. So yeah. trying to replicate that but still keep that uniqueness of the yeah. French hops there. And obviously it's going to be a bit of a summer beer, because it's got that nice, crisp, peppery, lemon 
But it's also not small ABV. These they can get up to about seven-ish. Seven yeah, this yeah. one's about seven. Yeah. 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 So, but no, very, 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 very tasty. So, very cool. Excellent. All right, next uh, we start getting to the, the the big boys. Yeah. The Brahma Ale is a double IPA. Uh, it's up around over like nine and a half. Nine, generally. Nine and a half. Wow. So, I've had it before. T maybe do you want to talk about some of the ingredients and what? Sure. You get, again, a little bit interesting. What you guys do with this right, one? Yeah. So, that, so it's, it's you know basically like a standard yeah. IPA with the addition of grapefruit peel. And lemongrass. What does lemongrass do? Do you think? Like, well, I, th yeah. I think it adds to like, not like a bitterness, but maybe like a slight astringency. Just um, enough, and it's it's hidden. I mean, we on purpose. Yeah. It's just adding a complexity that's probably behind the scenes somewhere. That yeah. most of those big hops are probably going to be most that, but it's something in there. Well, it's interesting. Cause it's 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 sort of lightly boozy. So you know, definitely you're feeling the alcohol. You're tasting the alcohol, but it's not it's not big malty. Like I'm getting much more grapefruit and the, the sort of the again you know, the dank or earthy hops are kind of really out front and kind of kind of the star in this one, but, but you know, just enough malt, like the malt's there, it's holding it up, and obviously it's, there's gotta be a good malt bill at nine and a half percent, but it's a, uh, it's a big beer. This is a yeah. big, big, and, big beer. You know, and part, part of that, we add a uh, local good flow honey um, as, uh, as a simple sugar for the yeast. And then the, the biggest of the biggest next, it's the Shiva. Shiva Stout. So how big, what's the ABV on the Shiva Stout? It's pretty, uh, uh, it's, it's over it's 10, right? yeah, like, it's, Definitely over 10. It's been coming out close to 11 lately. Yeah. We're actually talking about like just dialing it back down a little bit because it's it's a lot of alcohol <laughs> in, a, in a beer. My favorite of yours, like the big boozy stouts, and the fact that you had the the, the dates with the, the bourbon. Like yeah. I just thought, like there's this like there's very uh, you know dark fruit bit of bourbon. That was very subtle. Well, really we've been barrel aging it in, in whiskey barrels. Oh, you're kidding um, me. The late. Uh, most recent batches. Um, so this one wouldn't be it. Yeah, those are coming down the pipe. Yeah, it's down the pipeline. Um, probably the next version that we have. A lot more whiskey quality barrels. in those, you think? Yes, or? whiskey and then like some vanilla flavors from the oak. It's one of those ones where you know, even though it's high ABV, you never felt it was that high. You know what I mean? Like it was kind of. And I mean, I just I always big fan of the, the sheep. But like it's cool. it's just a. I mean. There are days where it's cold here in Austin, and today is one of those days, ironically. Yeah. Like, yep, yep. It's, it's, it was actually around freezing this morning, which is kind of, for you guys, oh, yeah. like the apocalypse. Yeah. And yeah. if you add some kind of ice on the roads, it's like, oh. <laughs> You know, it's funny, uh, but because, you know, the, the, the GABF experience, as you may recall, is, is you get like a little cup, you get like a little beer, <laughs> you try it. You think about it, you get back in line if you want more of it. Uh, the Bitterama, now that I've had the chance to enjoy a, a good pint and a half of it, is just a tremendous beer. I think I'll call that one my favorite. I declare a favorite. Again, I like, I like to cheat, make myself look smart on, on camera and, and do what the judges say. Uh, but definitely the Bitterama is my favorite. Just such a, such a wonderfully balanced beer, like, like unique. Delicious. Uh, I actually, it's, I think it's one of those beers that folks that, for folks that don't drink beer, like if you gave them some of that, they'd be probably quite interested because it's not, it doesn't have all like the bitter or the, the beer qualities that sort of non-drinkers don't enjoy. But it's got a wonderful, complex and unique flavor. Um, the rest are also delicious. I mean, let's be honest. Like you guys are making killer beers. Uh, this has been awesome. Bitterama wins. I'm gonna finish with the uh, the Shiva. So that's one of my. It's my. In my heart of hearts, my, my long-term favorite, but this is the Bitterama is the winner today. So thanks, guys. It's been awesome. As always, great time with the Whip-In. Had some beers with you before once again, and we'll in the future, too. So Definitely. cheers. Cheers. Boudemont. Bob's up. Salute.